you are welcome to today's update. Bit of a story of the two sides of the pond today. Things are perhaps turning a bit of a corner in Europe. Still a long way to go in the winter. Uh, things could go uh, get significantly worse in the next few months, but so far the trends are looking slightly better. In the United States, they're not looking slightly better. And we'll also have some good news from Australia and some not so good news from South America today as well, so that's the plan. But let, let's just kick straight off with that uh, thing we were talking about. So um, these are the cases in the United States going up. Now, I think this blip here is for Thanksgiving when report things were underreported, but now they're somewhat overreported. But we can see the trend is up. Likewise, in Canada, the trend is up, but not as steeply as the United States. And of course, this graph is adjusted for population size. In Europe, uh, things are starting to go down. So what this tells us is the intervention measures in Europe have worked, unless it's pure coincidence, but I don't think it is. So what this is telling us is that these interventions, these restrictions, these what let lockdowns, semi-lockdowns, tiered, whatever it is, social behaviour are having a difference. They are working, unless it's a remarkable coincidence, and I don't think it is. And that's an important lesson to learn from that. Um, so we are concerned about the United States at the moment, and we'll get some detail on that with some evidence shortly as well. Um, now, we can see here's the United States, and we're going to look at this a bit later on, but Brazil, Argentina and Mexico, you can see, are doing way better in number of cases. So clearly, you can see the number of cases are massively lower in Brazil, Argentina and Mexico than the United States, according to this graphic anyway. Uh, but of course, this is uh, these figures are complete poppycock. They're not accurate at all because we've got to take into account the level of testing. So let's do that. And when we take in the account of the level of testing, we see basically, well, Argentina doesn't even rate for testing. It's not even registering the number of tests. Brazil stops registering test results about then and Mexico basically aren't doing any testing compared to the testing in the United States. So what this means is that the situation is probably pretty bad. We've got evidence that it is bad in Brazil. Argentina likely, Mexico is likely to be bad. Um, I'm going to give you evidence for Brazil in today's, uh, today's video. Um, so the Americas, in other words, are, are perhaps the worst hit area uh, at, at the moment. And um, if we just have a quick glance, I think, at the, uh, the overall American trends. Um, so here we see the upward trend. Um, now, it is slightly skewed by the, uh, I think most Americans take about four days off for Thanksgiving. It's quite a big deal. But anyway, the trend, the trend is up the way. Do let me know if you didn't have four days off. I'm sure a lot of you didn't. Um, deaths, uh, likewise, an upward trend. Again, the, 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 the trend here is somewhat overinflated because of Thanksgiving. Um, but but hospitalizations in the States, uh, that's the last date we have any data for, 21st of November. And we can see it's going well up. This last figure is artifactual. Um, so way higher than it was at the previous peak. So, so that is the concerning direction in the, uh, in the United States. But I'm going to start off with some good news. So let's just have briefly some good news. Um, Incredible news, really. Australia. Um, check out the reference for yourself. Everything on the government website. Uh, yesterday, there were seven new cases in Australia. The day before that was nine. That makes that many altogether. Just under 28,000. New South Wales, four cases yesterday, five the day before. Queensland, three cases yesterday, two the day before. Western Australia, no cases yesterday, two the day before. Australia has accumulated 908 uh, deaths altogether. Now hospitalizations in Australia at the moment as of today, New South Wales they have five, none in intensive care. Northern Territories 13, none in intensive care. Queensland 11, none in intensive care. Capital Territory, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia have a grand total of no hospitalizations. Quite incredible. And let's look at the graph so um, th 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 this was the mess up in uh, Victoria about then, but th it became well controlled and now we're down to no community transmission again. So that is what the graph should like should look like. But again, and this seems to be a constant theme in this pandemic. And um, 
There seems to be a bit of a theme in the world at the moment. There doesn't seem to be any accountability. So whoever messed up in Victoria, obviously it was no one's fault, according to everyone who's concerned. It wasn't their fault, but uh, obviously it was someone's fault. But there doesn't seem to be any accountability at the moment. Everyone seems to be getting away with everything. I don't know if I'm just old-fashioned or something, but... Um, you know, um, during most of my 40 years at work, I was held highly accountable for things. But it doesn't quite seem to be the case now. At least uh, in these huge mistakes, it doesn't seem to be the case. I'm sure you're accountable in your job as I am in mine, but um, less less so for the, the more senior people. The more senior you are, the more it seems you get away with. Not, not a nice situation. United States... Um, now, this high number of new cases is somewhat artifactual because of the delay for the Thanksgiving holiday. So what, means is you, what it means is you kind of accumulate cases. So it's underreported in the holiday and then it, all the cases kind of come at once. So the cases being reported now and the deaths are from some of the Thanksgiving time and um, some of the current time because of the delay. But we can still say there's about a 10% increase in the past week in, uh, in cases in the United States. Current hospitalisation is definitely well over 100,000. That is the latest figure for those on intensive care. That is the latest figure for those currently ventilated. Of course, the trend is not to ventilate these critically ill patients if we can possibly avoid it. Um, deaths in the States the past few days. Again, um, 2,310 uh, yesterday, 2,439 the day before. Uh, 286 the day before. These are somewhat higher because of the, uh, the the delay from the holiday, but still pretty appalling death figures. So check out the trends and the, the, the links as always for you to check it out. California seems to be taking action. 30 million people ordered to stay at home. Um, now quite how that works out, I don't know. I mean, certain businesses have been closed, That that's for sure. Um, but it's, it's safe to say there's there's higher restrictions. And what they're worried about in California is the limited available of uh, intensive care um, facilities. So it's been kind of being titrated against that hospital and intensive care facilities. But more, more on uh, individual experiences of that later on. Um, now, um, University of Washington is quite useful. Um, Institute of Health Metrics. COVID-19 research briefing. This was released on the 4th of December. Uh, cases and deaths continue to increase steadily, of course, throughout the country, virtually all parts of the country. Current situation. So last week, the average number of new cases was 165,200 per day. That relates to 145,900 per day the week before. So there is no doubt there is an increase in cases. That is definite. Last week, the deaths averaged at 1,600. 60 per day the week before is 1,470 per day. So again, uh, and because these are averaged out over the week, there's no question that these are, are genuine trends. So the cases averaged out over the week and the deaths averaged out over the week. Uh, that makes COVID-19 the number one cause of death in the United States of America this week. And the effective R value is greater than one in 43 states. This means these figures will be higher next week than this week. So this week's higher than week before, higher than the week before, next week's gonna be higher. We know that for sure, because the R value is greater than one in 43 states. Now they estimate that 15% uh, of Americans have been uh, infected as of November. Now a quick calculation, that would be around about 50 odd million, wouldn't it? Other estimates we've seen are twice that high. So. So we don't really know here. So some people say 15% of the population have been infected. Some say it's getting on for 30% have already been infected. Um, but this is based on pretty good mathematical modeling. So I do tend to suspect that this figure is perhaps not too far out. So we're probably, no, no I think it's not worse. Probably, it does seem to be an underestimate based on the on, on other work we've looked at in the last few days. Bas basically, we don't know for sure. Uh, but it looks like 15 to 30 percent of the population of the United States have so far been infected with COVID-19. Quite where it is in that range, fairly big range there, of course, 
um, we don't actually, where have I gone? Now I am, we don't actually know for sure. Now, next few months, the predictions Washington State, um, the, the, these are really quite, um, quite, quite significant predictions, actually. Um, let, let's look at it. Next few months, reference scenario, uh, th th this, this accounts for expected scale up of the vaccination. Now, let me think. it's Monday today. So the very first vaccinations, apart from those in Russia, which started a few days ago, and China, which started about a month ago. Um, in the UK, we've got the first vaccines being given tomorrow that have been through the full, the full um, three stages of clinical trial and official approval. So they're starting tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, in, in the UK. Um, now, it's important to remember the lag effect. Full immunity from the vaccines that are given tomorrow will not be realised for 31 days after the first vaccine. In other words, these vaccines are basically going to be irrelevant in the terms of the progression of the disease in the UK throughout December. And we're only going to be vaccinating 400,000 people in the first tranche anyway. So basically, it's going to make no difference. And even, even for those that it do, does, it, there's a full month, 31 days delay. The European Union, um, the European Medicines Agency, basically, in my view, uh, has not got its act together. If you're from the European uh, Medicines Agency and you want to argue with me, uh, come on, we'll talk about that, of course. I'm always open to new uh, evidence. But it seems they haven't got the act together. The first meeting uh, to announce this doesn't seem to be till the 29th of December. What are they doing? It really makes you wonder. And then individual member states after that. Because this data is all there. It's been an an analysed by, by the, the British Medicines Agency since October. What are the European Medicines Agency doing? We're in, a, in the middle of an emergency here. Even the United States does seem to be pretty slow. And we were expecting an announcement from them on the 10th or the 11th for the first vaccine. So, so again, we're looking at, at a bit of a delay here. I'm not quite sure um, what they're waiting for. Um, I think there's 17,000 people work for the FDA. You know, you think... Word is they took four days off at Thanksgiving. I don't know. If you work for the FDA and you, you slogged your guts out over Thanksgiving, then, then fair enough. But it, it does seem to be... We, we seem to have had this scientific delay, which is inevitable, but now we seem to be having a bureaucratic, administrative, um, jobs worth sort of delay. That's an impression. That's an impression. Um, might be wrong. Uh, anyway, ne next few months, uh, this is based on the Washington State data. Um, so that's the vaccination. Cumulative deaths by the 1st of April, um, well over half a million in the United States. 539,000 deaths predicted by the 1st of April. This is going to be a bad winter and the vaccines really are not going to help us very much this winter. We are dependent on hand space, space ventilate and all the other non-pharmaceutical interventions. You know, bolstering immunity, things like that, that we've talked about so many times. Um, but pr pretty sobering number there of deaths by the 1st of April next year. Now, by the 1st of April next year in the United States, I, I expect the effects of the vaccines to be starting to kick in pretty seriously then. Um, but we've got... It's a long time. We've got all of December pretty well. January, February, March. We've got the cold winter months. And a lot of people are going to die. That is, is a certainty. But we'll see how we can moderate that. Uh, peak deaths, probably about 3,000 a day in uh, mid to late January is probably going to be the time of peak deaths. So things are going to carry on getting worse for the next six or seven weeks. Vaccination is likely to uh, speed up the transition back to normal life later in the year, right? So we are going to get back to normal life later in the year, at least as far as the United States is concerned. And indeed Europe, because, well, the UK anyway will have the vaccines by then, the rest of Europe a little bit behind that um, because of what I perceive as their bureaucratic delay. Um, now, this is sobering. The, the, the saying that despite this massive vaccination programme, which they factored in, um, 
the massive vaccination program is only going to prevent 9,000 deaths by April the 1st. Basically, what this means is this winter, um, vaccines aren't going to save a lot of lives compared to the 539,000 total deaths that are likely to occur. But um, a further 14,000 lives can be saved with a more rapid vaccine scale up targeting high risk individuals. So if we can target high risk individuals, they're the ones that are most likely to die. That's the easiest way to bring the death rate down. So this depends on how um, the United States gets its vaccine act together. And of course, this is just as true of everywhere else. Um, death rate could be higher um, if state governors don't get their act together as well. Uh, state governors implementing packages of mandates as hospital stress becomes high. So in other words, this is saying that their model assumes that state governors will take appropriate action if hospital stress becomes high. Because if hospital stress is high and people can't get treated for more basic things, th th then more people are going to die. And as well as that, apart from the COVID-19, if, if, if someone can't get into hospital with an appendicitis, they're going to die. So we could be in a situation, if appropriate action is not taken, that people are dying of things that could normally easily be treated with a few days oxygen for the COVID, a bit of a steroid for the COVID or, um, you know, other basic medical interventions. And never forget, scaling up mask use to 95% can save 66,000 lives by the 1st of April. In other words, remember this, so, so vaccines... Uh, will pro pro vaccines will probably save 9,000 lives by the 1st of April. 95% uh, mask wearing can save 66,000 lives by the 1st of April. Mask wearing, saving 66,000 lives by the 1st of April. Now, just to reinforce this before we leave the States, um, White House uh, Coronavirus Task Force uh, to Governors on Sunday. Now, I must say, I've been somewhat unimpressed with the quality of uh, governance and, and example, not just in the United States, but, but, but everywhere, really. There's been some, some pretty bad examples. I mean, I talked about California there, the governor of California, New, Newsom, Newcomb, can't quite remember. Anyway, he was forced to publicly apologise after... Um, I think he went out for a meal in a high-risk environment. I can't remember the details, but but you know, but people in this position should be leading by example. And this has been a problem uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, our politicians have sometimes uh, been found wanting. Um, do as I do, not. Do as I say, not do as I do. You know, it should, it should be um, do as I do, follow me. I'm the leader. Anyway, m of course, most, most leaders have been good, but quite a few significant disappointments from senior people who should know better. Um, uh, the, the COVID risk for all Americans is, is at a historic high. We're in a very dangerous place due to the current extremely high COVID baseline. So whatever happens, because there's so much community transmission at the moment, it's not going to go away and hospital capacity is always limited. Right, that's the United States. Now, go going on to Brazil, where we saw that the testing is basically not being reported. So the number of cases in Brazil on the official figures uh, are irrelevant. We, we don't know what the real numbers are. But um, population is 210 million. Uh, middle income country, really. Um, Per capita income is just under $9,000. Compared that to India, it's just over $2,000. But in both India and Brazil, uh, there are great inequalities of wealth. And um, I'm sure we've all seen these videos of the, the slum areas in Brazil and the, the gov governed by uh, gangsters and local warlords and um, great inequality of, uh, of wealth in some areas of Brazil as indeed there are in India, you know, great inequalities in wealth, blatant, glaring inequalities in wealth. Um, 600 million people in India in, in, in and pretty well abject poverty. It's a um, very unequal society, as is Brazil. 
Um, now, um, but anyway, back to Brazil. That was just sort of a bit of context. Back to Brazil. Um, reports from um, this is actually from the Washington Post. This this report, but see, seemed well journalistically uh, researched report. People unable to get help in the medical system. Some people being found dead at home. And again, if you can't get into hospital, then you can die of some minor treatable things. This is the irony. Hundreds can't get intensive care beds. Hospital uh, officials warning of supply shortages. Um, now, the the uh, the private hospital system in Brazil is is pretty good if you've got the money, but even that apparently is is full now. Um, even that's ninety eight percent full. So potential collapse of medical services. What this what this means is um, a lot of people will die from simple things that could easily be treated. And even the wealthy people who can afford to go to intensive care in the private sector, the, the beds are 98% full. <clears throat> so uh, people will be dying unnecessarily is what that means. Um, so this, this 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 doctor here is in charge of the Brazilian Association of Intensive Care. She said that people are no longer f scared, that the fear has dulled, so people are behaving in ways which are basically reckless in Brazil now. Or at least enough people to spread the infection are behaving in a reckless way. Many people either simply don't care or no longer believe the dangers posed by the virus, she says. Um... We're facing a campaign of disinformation and denial, and we know that the senior leadership in Brazil has been a, uh, a disgrace. No other way to put it, a disgrace. Um, the impact in January will be very, very large. Uh, our fear is that January and February the health system won't be able to bear it, so looks like things even worse in Brazil. Now just sticking with this theme uh, of uh, accountability, um, or oh, should we, yeah let's carry on, it's probably going to be, a, sorry I'm going a bit longer than I thought. Um, accountability, um, I was just watching this video uh, 8th of June when we were saying on this channel um, that asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic people are clearly spreading the disease. Now, why was I saying that? It's not because I'm particularly clever. It's because this information was readily, freely available in the public domain. That's how I knew. But, senior person in the WHO, transmission of the coronavirus by people who aren't showing symptoms is very rare. Well, no, it's not. It's very common. She was wrong. <laughs> You know, this is this is this is on the the eighth of June. You know, when 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 this was clear to me, um, she said it's rare for us an asymptomatic person to transmit to a second individual. I mean, dear me. Ah. We need to follow the symptomatic cases. Yes, we do. We need to follow the other ones as well. The, of course, she's still in a job, same as everyone else at the WHO. Now, where is the accountability? How wrong do you have to be for something to happen? You know, is 180 degrees not enough? I don't know. Right, um, um, I was going to do a thing on super spreading in the UK. Um, I'm actually going to leave that for now because I've gone on far too long today. So what I'm going to do is just show you a few... Um, We'll do that super spreading one at another time. It is important, so I don't want to do it at the end. I want, I want more people to listen to it rather than people that are tired. So let's just look at a few, um, a few of your pictures. If we have the technology, we do. So th th these, th th this picture series is just trying to ask people to illustrate from, from local pictures what, what the pandemic means for them. That, that, this is kind of about personal experience, really. So this is uh, Becky. This is her experience. And uh, notice that the end mask is clear for lip reading. And uh, they look clean, I'm sure they're all, <coughs> I'm sure they're all regularly washed. Um, this is uh, Kathy. 
Now, I wonder where Kathy lives. Um, keep at least one adult kangaroo apart. Probably not in France. So thank you, Kathy, for that. Uh, who is this? This is Lena in France. Oh yeah, this is good. It's the uh, it's the thing with the mask. Now I don't know if you can see this actually. We'll just blow it up. We have looked at similar things many times, but uh, this is just something she's seen on the wall in France. So uh, this person breathing out the virus. Person there being protected. Basically, I'm not quite sure which way around this is going. <laughs> Obviously, both people are wearing masks. It's good. Most important for the infected person to wear a mask, but there's some protection from other people not wearing from an uninfected person wearing a mask as well, as we've looked at many times. And this is this this you can't really see this, but this is this is from um, Texas. So this is the. Um, Yeah. Anyway, you can't you can't really see it there, but there's a tent there that shows that um, there's an emergency hospital in Texas. But but the, the, I'll give I'll come to the point about that in, uh, in a minute. Just see if there's any more pictures. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, Sharon in Essex. Just before we come back to Texas, we won't forget. COVID nineteen alert. Essex is in uh, now in tier two. Good. So people being informed of the status as they go into uh, Essex. Right, just getting back to that point about uh, California that I wanted to make. Um, we live in a small community and our hospital is struggling to keep up. Unfortunately, a proportion of our population feel like their freedoms are completely lost if they wear a mask. Remember, if 95% of Americans would wear a mask would save 64,000 lives between now and the 1st of April. Unfortunately, a proportion of our population feel like their freedoms are completely lost if they wear a mask. Healthcare community has begged them, but there are still many that will not budge. It's sickening in more ways than one. Also, a man at another hospital in this general area died from some other problem because of a larger hospital could not take him in. This is the problem when the hospitals are busy, um, people don't stop having heart attacks and other medical conditions that need to be treated and um, that is is resulting in, in, in deaths around the world as we know. Okay, so um, that's us for today. Sorry, I've gone on a bit long. We will do that bit about the um, the backward contact tracing because it's a really important point actually. I'll do that on the next on the next one. But thank you for watching this one as always.